Good morning. How are we doing, Huntington Chapel? Welcome to those who are joining online. I trust you fared well in your trials this week. There are certain things that we need to have to make a house a home. And one of them is a laundry room. Without it, there's no way to clean up the mess. So I spent this week rehauling the dryer and the washer because they have made these devices so intelligently these days that they don't work. So for $53, I put them back together. It took me a week, but I did it. And the reason why I, I mention this is because as Christians, Perseverance is necessary. And so is washing. This morning in, in Ephesians chapter 5, I'm going to read a, a section, a passage. You know, on Wednesday nights, we have Bible study. And it's not just something nice to do. It's something that is essential to our spiritual well-being. Listen to the Word of God. Ephesians 5, starting in 25. Husbands, love your wives. Just as Christ loved the church, and gave himself up for her to make her holy, cleansing her by the washing with the water through the word and to present her to himself as a radiant church without stain or wrinkle or any other blemish but holy and blameless. In this same way, husbands ought to love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. After all, no one ever hated his own body, but he feeds and cares for it just as Christ does the church. For we are members of of his body. I'm going to pause there because from here I can see all of you, but I want you to look to your left and to your right because each of us needs cleansing through the word. It is only through Christ that we can properly see his body. For this reason, a man will leave his father and mother and be united to his wife, and the two will become one flesh. This is a profound mystery, but I'm talking about Christ and the church. Please rise as I open the service in a word of prayer. Father, how we thank you that there is nothing impossible for our God. 
And that includes cleansing us from our past sins, from our present and our future sins, that we would be presented to our Holy Father spotless, blameless, because of the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, we pray and we ask that you would come, that you would sprinkle us with this blood today, that we would be cleansed, that the past would no longer have any hold, that we would be free, for your son died for our freedom. So, Father God, I pray that we would would grasp how wide, how deep, how great the love of our God is. Father, we ask that you be with us in the precious name of Jesus. Amen. Good morning, good morning, Huntington Chapel. Good morning, good morning, good morning. us this morning need Jesus? I mean, how many of us this morning really need Jesus? Oh, you can do better than that. I said, how many of us in this house really need Jesus this morning? Sometimes we can act like the strongest person in the room. I need this house this morning. I need Jesus this morning. So if you need Jesus this morning, let's just give him some praise right now. Let's open up with some praise. Let's honor him this morning. Let's honor him. Jesus, we need you this morning, God. We need you. We need you like the air we breathe, God. Oh, we worship you, Jesus. Blessed it be your name in the land that is plentiful with the streams of abundance flow blessed be your name blessed be your name where I'm found in the desert place though I walk through the wilderness blessed be your name let's all sing Every blessing you pour out, I'll turn back to bring. When the darkness closes in, Lord, still I will say, Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glory. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your name. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be your glorious name. Jesus. 
Blessed be the name when the sun's shining down on me, when the world's as should be. Blessed be the name. Yeah. Blessed be the name on the road marked with suffering. Wow. 
Father, have your way. Jesus, have your way. I really feel the Lord leading this song right now that I'm going to sing. This wasn't on the list. This wasn't on my list. But this is on the Lord's list. So that trumps my list. Amen? on a screen do we believe that he's our healer do we believe that this morning I want to sing this part one more time nothing is impossible for you 
nothing is in There's an anointing in the atmosphere right now. This is not just a song, but this is a declaration. If you are in this place and you need God's healing, I'm not just talking about physically. I'm talking about mentally. I'm talking about emotionally. If you have a family member, a loved one, someone you know that needs the touch of God this morning, can we cry out, ladies and gentlemen, can we step outside of ourselves this morning? How desperate do we need to be? Can we reach heaven right now in this little red church today? Come on, who's with, can we do this? Jesus, Jesus, you are our healer. You are our portion. You are our prize. Hallelujah. Can we do that one more time, Carrie? Come on. Nothing is impossible for you. 
Nothing is impossible for nothing is impossible for you. Cause you hold my world in your hand. another song this morning. We're believing the things that we're singing this morning. Hallelujah. I 
Jesus, the Bible says that one of his constituents pulled out a sword and took off the air of the man that tried to capture Jesus. Jesus says, no, don't do that. He says, do you think if I called upon my father, he would not le release even seven legions of angels to deliver me? But the word must be complete. It must be established. See, Jesus knew all that he would endure on the cross. He knew that he would be bloodied, that he would be beaten to being unrecognizable. He knew all the suffering, but despite of aborting, despite of saying, no, I'm not going to die like this for people who don't deserve it. He said that despite of them, may all things be fulfilled because he loves you and me. This man, at this point in time, despite of his fear in himself, chose to endure suffering. The word says none of our pain would ever compare to what Jesus endured on that cross. And he willingly decided to do it for you and for I. So when we say that he is our portion, he did not die on that cross for us to be bound. He did not die on the cross for us to be sick. That wasn't the reason why he died. He died so that we may live, that we may live but it is a decision. It's a decision that must be made in the heart first and then confessed out the mouth second that he is the Christ and that he is coming back for a spotless bride. And this morning, saints, as we have woken up this morning and took a breath, we have the opportunity now to let Jesus know that he is our portion, 
that he is our prize, that he is our deliverer, that he is our healer, that he is our provider, that he is our protector. Who is he to you this morning? Let's honor him. I'm not telling you to do backflips. I'm just saying do more than what you usually do. This life is a sacrifice. And there are people who are dying for it all over the world. This morning, can we truly say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you for choosing me. Thank you for taking a little wretch like me and giving me a life that I didn't earn or deserve, that I don't have to wake up in the morning and strive for. But all I have to do is abide in your word, in your truth, in your spirit. It's just a decision. So God, we thank you this morning. We honor you this morning. I'll cry out for every person in this room that is battling with any sickness in their body, including myself. I will cry out to you, Jesus. I cry out to you, God. I pray for the healing of everyone in this room that needs it. I cry out to you, Father. Heal those who have cancer in their body. We rebuke it in Jesus' name. I cry out to you, God. Heal your people, those who are battling. some glory in this house. to you this morning every burden every care every fear all fear of the future all fear of not knowing what the outcome would be we surrender it to you this morning any issues in our hearts any unforgiveness any offense any anger we surrender it to you this morning. Oh God, we wait in your presence. We're tired of doing church and playing church. We are the church. Tired of looking at our clocks. Do something different in this region. Pour out your spirit on this region. We say we want revival, but we need to think like someone who wants revival. What does it mean to have revival? What is the evidence of the spirit of the living God being in a room? It's not about jumping up and down, rolling around on the floor. It's about the repented heart. 
because when you walk into the room, Jesus, we see how unholy we are and how holy you are and how much you love us. So that's why we can give this sacrificial praise this morning. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. My God and my King. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. It's all right. Come on. You can clap. You can be seated and just rest in the presence of God. There's going to come a day. We don't know when that day may be. When you may look to the left and the person won't be there. You may look to the right and the person won't be there. I pray that if you look at me, I ain't here. Because if I'm the one looking and you ain't there, oh, that's a problem. We need to take this thing seriously, saints. I mentioned before, keep a newspaper in one hand and then the Bible in the other. Don't let these cute trees fool you. There's a lot going on beyond it. And there's a devil that's after you and everyone attached to you. Everyone that has your last name. And the greater the glory on your life, the bigger the target on your back. This is not a game. We don't come into this place as a social club. This is not a country club. There's no spa treatment. We come into this place for one reason and one reason only, for the living God, for Christ. Christ crucified. And he's no longer on that cross. He is the living God. And when we come into this room, it's not about us. It's about him. We decrease as he increases in us. What kind of church do you want to be? We worship for 15 minutes. The word is for another 15 minutes. Then we got to go out because we got to catch the football game. What kind of church do you want to be? How are you watching your clock and then wanting to be in an eternal heaven? Where there's no time or space. When we get into the presence of God, if we're thinking about what we can do when we get out of here, something is wrong, saints. Let me be the one to tell you. Throw tomatoes at me. I'm saying this. We are in a season where if anything comes before God, we are in a not so good place. Because Satan is trying to distract us from the truth. That he is the way, the truth, and the life. No one shall get to the Father but by him. Period. It doesn't matter if you're a good person. It matters if you're a righteous person who has received Jesus Christ into your life. And he's not looking for perfection. He's just looking for availability. Those who are humble in heart, sober in mind, that's all he wants, is you to say yes. As jacked up as you or I may be, just say yes. Friday, I had the privilege of supporting a brother, a prophet who was speaking at a men's conference. 
and he passed me the mic and I'm standing on stage and it just so happens that most of the men in the room were all pastors and I'm looking and I just see exhaustion just exhaustion these mighty men of God with churches the size that can fit thousands of people maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit maybe about six seven hundred people but my point is these men would be considered mighty in the natural but in the spirit they were exhausted because they're fighting battles real authentic battles we need to pray for our leaders and just before we transition I want to do that because the church is under attack. The shepherds of these houses across America, their houses are under attack. They're going after the men of God. They're going after the wives and the children. They're going after the elders. Why? Because if you could cut the head out, the body will die too. And Satan has us so distracted that all these, things, all these things are happening right under our nose and we're not aware. And God is saying, I'm going to and fro looking for one person to cry out to me, but I'm finding none. Because those who are crying out to me are crying out for their own selves. Didn't my word say that I will take care of you? So while he's taking care of me, I'm crying out for someone else. For how can I say I love God but don't love my brother? I don't care if my brother gets on my nerves every now and again. I love him. If you're in relationship, we're going to get on each other's nerves. But we love each other no matter what. That's the mindset we have to be in this morning. You understand what I'm saying, saints? Amen. Let's stop playing church. Let's be the church. Find out where your position is, whether in this house or in the community, but serve God. Make your presence known. When you walk in a room, let them know that Jesus is Lord. Spirit of the living God, we thank you. We honor you this morning. God, we pray for every pastor, every pastor across this nation and around the world, the wives, the children, whether they're young or old, we pray for the elders, their families, whether they're young or old, we pray for the prophets, the evangelists, and the apostles, whether they're young or old. We pray for the bishops and the deacons, whether they're young and old. We pray for every ministry leader, those who said yes to the calling, to the sacrifice, those who put their lives on the line every day without rest. They are being attacked every day, some worse than others. We call out to you, Jesus, and we ask for rest for all of them this day. Peace. We speak peace in Israel right now. We speak peace to the people of Israel right now. The Church of America stands with you. We pray for the seed of Abraham. Bless them and keep them in the name of Jesus. Father, have your way in our hearts that we may be pleasing to you as we are representing you as ambassadors here on this earth, now and forever. In the mighty and precious name of Jesus, amen. Amen. Good morning. Okay. <laughs> wow. How do we transition into announcements, right? This is how we're gonna do it. Al, you could come up first. <laughs> Good morning, family. Uh, I'm gonna talk a little bit about the men's ministry because we've been, every week, we've been uh, talking, we're gonna be saying about the different ministries. Um, I don't know 
know if you've ever noticed this uh, painting up here. Uh, one of our uh, retreats, the men painted that. So we, some of the things we do. I put this little together, stuck into the archives. So I made sure to keep it two minutes or less. So, <laughs> so uh, the men's ministry, we, uh, we meet every Saturday morning uh, for fellowship and prayer. And we meet every third Tuesday uh, of the month evening. Uh, this coming uh, Tuesday, which uh, the third will be not this Tuesday, but the following Tuesday, we'll be uh, reviewing the Genesis movie. There's a a movie out there, I don't know, some of you may have seen it, but it shows uh, a rendering of envisionment of what uh, Genesis, what took place, but they're bridging the gap between science and the history in the Bible, where they agree. So it's a, it's a great thing. Uh, supposedly 57 scientists around the world are all on board and they've supported this and they've come to that fact and I think it's a fantastic thing. So men, please uh, come, come join us. Um, we do many things, as you can see. A lot of these are from retreats that we've been on. Uh, you might have saw one of the pictures in there. There was a round table, uh, a bunch of us behind there with masks on that was during COVID. But there was a bunch of lunch bags. Uh, we, one of the things for community outreach, we made a bunch of sandwiches and meals for Spooner House, which is off of Bridgeport Avenue in Shelton. So we, we put all these lunches together and we brought it so that the families uh, were able to, that were in Spooner House at the time could have that. Uh, you may have saw Teddy, uh, m a lot of the different ministries got together for a Shelton day. I think it was three years ago. I think it was three, three, three years ago. And we had a great, our own little uh, thing. So I could go on and on. You saw a lot of the pictures of the different things we've done together, make uh, pizza, thanks to Chef uh, Danny, who always supports us greatly in uh, all of these type of things. Um, but, you know, it's, it's really a great bonding uh, fellowship experience. So come check it out. Thank you. Hey, Steve, Steve. You want to come up so you can pray? Am I in trouble? <laughs> no, Al. Your father's pleased. Amen. Amen. Father, we come to you, and we thank you for, uh, for Al and for his leadership yes. and for his vision. Because he receives these things from you, and you put them in his heart. 
And we, Father, we, we ask that you continue to show him how to reveal the love of the Father to the men of this house. That they, in turn, would be able to give it to their wives and their families. That the whole house of God would be raised up because men's lives are changed by our Heavenly Father. Bless this ministry and bless Al Amen. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. God bless you. This was a pretty cool location. This was like the highest point in New Hampshire. You can see Canada, New York, New Hampshire, and Vermont. It was a pretty cool place. You, it's weird. The higher you go, you start to breathe different. Um, that was a little scary for me. <laughs> um, this Saturday, October 14th, 14th we will be having, uh, because we rescheduled fall workday, we're, we're going to be preparing for the winter. Amen. <laughs> So that's going to be this Saturday. Lunch will be provided. Lobster tails for all those that are coming. I'm joking. I'm joking. Pizza and sandwiches. <laughs> yeah. And two Saturdays uh, from 930 to 12 noon, the women's group will be having coffee and Jesus gathering at Lucetta's house. Lucetta over here. Amen. And this week is going, this Friday is going to be Chosen Stones. But starting in, uh, we're, we're in October, starting in November, the first and third Friday is when Chosen Stones will be meeting. All right. I think that's going to be easier for everyone to remember. All right. Am I forgetting anything? All right. Amen. Let us uh, have offering. Those are cries of the future. Amen. When you hear those cries, you know there's a future in the house. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Wow, this plate is about to overflow right here. Amen. Father, we thank you for the overflow. We receive that as a prophetic word. We are going to live from the overflow. Amen. Not what's in the cup, but the overflow. So, God, we thank you right now for the overflow. We thank you that we shall be good stewards of that overflow. And, Lord, we thank you. I pray that the dreamers in the house would dream again dream on what God can do through them. Let's build this house. And by the house, I mean us. May we be built up as a kingdom that will be impactful to the community. May the community in Shelton and the Valley know that Huntington Chapel is here. 
God, we pray that you bless this, your tithe and offering, and that you will multiply it. And Jesus, all will know your name because of it. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you. Thank you. Let us dismiss children for Children's Church. God bless you. We'll do one more song, and then our shepherd will come up to deliver the word of God. against the king no one can no one will oh oh said the victory belongs to Jesus victory belongs to him
the victory belongs to Jesus. Victory belongs to Him. 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 Lord and Heavenly Father, thank you so much for the victory that you give us. But Lord, it's not for us, it's for your Son. Lord, because we are His, He is ours. We are yours. You are ours. Oh, Holy Spirit, thank you. Thank you for your move here today. Lord, come and strengthen your children. Guide us, O oh Lord, in our identity every moment of every day. Lord God, bless us, strengthen us, and we give the victory to you. We rejoice in you, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah. If you could put the slide up of Jesus and the, and the little child that you just had up there. Man, I, I, I love this. I was four years old when Jesus became my best friend. He became my best friend at four years of age. To feel his love. To hear what he was declaring over me. Versus my siblings. Versus other people in my life. He was speaking to me. And from that age, whenever we sang, I wanted to make sure he heard my voice. Because I'm just, just not a part. No, I, yeah, we're worshiping God, but I'm worshiping my Savior. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. What an amazing. Guys, I, just, I want you to strengthen yourself right now. I never want a normal Sunday in this house. This is a supernatural place. He's here. He loves you. And he could only move in your life when you give him your attention. I love in, in Exodus chapter 5, it's, it, where Moses goes to see the burning bush, God says, ah, he, he speaks because he saw that he had Moses' attention. Does God have your attention? What does he want to tell you in that attention? What is it that you need to hear, but he's the only one that can really tell it to you in a way that will impact you? So just let's just take a minute of silence and receive from him his love, his hope. It's not over yet. Don't surrender to the declarations of the enemy. 
Strengthen yourself in the Lord and in his mighty power. Hear from him now. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, how we thank you for the voice of your Holy Spirit. Lord, we do admit we get frustrated because he never raises his voice. He is always that still, small voice that we need to quiet ourselves to hear. But Lord, when we hear, may we truly receive and to apply what he says, what you say. We thank you, God. We thank you for your church. Be with us this day, O God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, truth, we just had church, right? I could basically just say amen, give a benediction. You guys leave. You heard a great word. You heard a great message. But we're not one of those happy meal churches. We're not one of those happy meal churches. And I praise, I mean, it's, I, this is what I truly love. I, and guys, hallelujah. You need to know how much I love you. You need to know how much each of you add to my life. I love you. Because I know he loves you. And, and, and thank you for loving me back. Because you don't have to do that. What, a, what an awesome thing to be a part of something bigger than yourself. See, the church. The church. The victory. When we say the victory belongs to Jesus, what is Jesus? He's the head of the church. How come churches don't act like it? We have forgotten. Oh, Lord, forgive us for the times that we focus more on our programs than on Jesus. There's an old hymn. We're going to sing. You can sit down. The church's one foundation. If you know it, please sing it with me. The words will be back. The church is one foundation. Is Jesus Christ our Lord?
the church is one foundation. The church is one foundation. We can never lose sight of that. Going to church won't save you. It can equip you. Many people have gone to church, but they haven't experienced God. Because they don't go for the right reason. They're going to prove something instead of going to be proven. They go to do a little check. I'm here. In fact, going to church can be very dangerous because every church reads his word. And even though they don't preach it, they read it. And upon hearing it, you are responsible. You're responsible. You heard the truth. What are you doing with the truth? How are you moving? Is God equipping you? I I find it interesting. I hear these comments. I see these comments on social media. You know, and they sound really good. The church should be a community where messed up people are welcome. Outcasts are loved. Underdogs find a champion. The hopeless find hope, and the friendless find a friend. That is, that's good. But where's the mention of God in here? Where's the mention? And guys, this is where we really need to be careful because there are so many churches who I believe have stopped becoming a church because they're more about humanity. Everything is welcome. We celebrate everybody, regardless of your gender or your sexual orientation. We celebrate, come, all are welcome. And you know what? The truth, all are welcome. And we are to love people. There's going to be a day. It's coming where God is going to send a couple that doesn't fit our paradigm. And what are we going to do? Are we going to love them? Are we going to... See, because before we have the right to speak into someone's life, they have to know that we love them. If they don't know that we love them, we don't have the right to speak into their lives. So we need to love them, but not affirm that activity. And this is where we're going to need to listen to the Holy Spirit. Don't take it upon your... And this is where we just need to... God, how do I show this person that they're loved? Because here's what... And I love this because God loves you just the way you are. But he loves you too much to keep you there. See, once we come into a relationship with him, we begin to grow. He begins to reveal the truth. See, the problem is, a lot of times in our world, people think they know what is real. Everyone is searching to be real and to be vital. But how much time do we, how much of our lives is real? We go to work. Why? To to, to get money so I can pay my bills. Do you see your job as a God-ordained assignment? Do you see your job, your career, as an opportunity for God to move and for God's blessing to come upon you, but for you to live your faith out loud, not throwing it in everyone's face, not beating them over the head with the word, but making the most of every opportunity? How many people know that you are a Christian? How many people know what church you attend? Everyone you know should know that you are a Christian. Not because you tell them, hey, I'm a Christian, I'm a believer. But because of the way that you live your life. And because you love them enough to bring them, to invite them out of darkness 
and into the kingdom to invite them. Hey, why don't you come with me to my church this Sunday? Oh, what church is that? Oh, it's the Huntington Chapel. Because we've lost our perspective. We need to understand what, what is real and what is vital. There is, yeah, this is an element, but this is not the definition of the church. I love this. The church was not meant to entertain people. There are so many churches. Oh, boy, do they put on a show. Smoke machines, light shows, all the, it's amazing. As long as I'm a pastor here, we will not have a smoke machine in this sanctuary. But you better believe I'm praying for the smoke of the glory of the Lord. And I'm believing it's coming. If we are hungry enough, if, we are, if we're following him enough, if we are pursuing holiness enough, we are going to see it and experience it, and it's going to transform us forever. It exists to train disciples to glorify God and to reach the lost. See, you have to be equipped. You even have to be equipped to glorify God. Why? Because we've been conformed to what worship is. But we, in our worship, are you experience the presence of God? Well, I don't like this song. I don't care about the song. Is the song, are the words impactful? Are you listening to the Lord or have you been conformed that that has to be delivered in a certain format in order for you to participate? Now, I, I, I praise, I'm not, I'm not shutting it down, but I would have a hard time with rap. I just, I just don't know if I could rap. But there's a lot of Christian rap that I like, but I, I can just listen to it. It's hard for me to participate because that's a whole new language for me. It's a whole new way of speaking. But I'm willing to give it a try. If you want me to, or to Lord. <laughs> I heard this comment. The church restrains evil from advancing. What do you think of that? Does the church restrain evil from advancing? I don't believe so. It should. But we have allowed ourselves to fall asleep. We have allowed ourselves to just get into the monotony, the mundane Christian attendance. You know, I praise God. I praise God for the first 13 years of my life I attended church. After that, I no longer attended. I served. I served in the church. Once I was old enough to understand in God brought me back, and I saw his love, and I saw the love that he has for me, and he has this love for others, and I need to serve, and I need to communicate this, this love that God revealed to me. And I praise the Lord, I have been serving him in the church since I was 13 years old. And it has transformed, and he's still transforming me. Thank you, Jesus. But here's where, guys, we need to look at the church has fallen asleep in this nation. We don't take a stand. We've been programmed. you got to be tolerant. Well, the world's not tolerant of us, but we got to be tolerant. No. You know, we don't have to be tolerant. You know, there are sometimes, and I, I praise God because I, you see videos of people going to uh, public school meetings and making a stand for righteousness. And making a stand, reminding the school you're here to educate our kids and get them ready for a future, for a career. You are not here to put your agenda on them. 
and to, com- and to bring a social experiment to them and to stand for the truth. We need to take a stand. Where God has planted you, take a stand in love with wisdom. But you've got to be close to the Lord. When I was at going to school, and, and I, I, man, praise the Lord, I was at college, and, and people, the professors were making comments, and I would take a stand. And then other students who are Christians, they'd take a stand too. But they didn't know God. And they embarrassed the cause. But when you take a stand, you don't have to know everything, but you got to know Jesus. you got to hear his voice. you got to hear what he's calling you to say in that moment. We need to restrain evil. Again, it is easy for a church to lose focus and just focus on our programs instead of focusing on Christ. Many churches are not even aware that they're no longer building on the sure foundation. I was talking to Uncle G. He was saying how so many churches have gone woke. That there are some churches they can no longer invite to their program because they're really not churches. They're social clubs. It's amazing how many of them are out there. Now, they'll say they believe in the Word of God, but when you look at the practice, they're not practicing that way. See, we need to read and do and not deceive ourselves. Many people will say, I I don't need to go to church to be a Christian. Well, I don't know. Let's see what Scripture has to say about that. 1 Corinthians 12, 12. The body is a unit. Though it's made up of many parts, and though it's all its parts are many, they form one body. So it is with Christ. No, it really is an amazing thing. I, I, I to, if you, what would happen if you were to come into a room and you see an arm on the floor? That would kind of be disgusting. It's like, ah! 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 Something's wrong! Ah! What if my left hand says, I don't need to be attached to the body? You know, it would have a hard time getting anywhere. See, because it needs to be attached to my wrist, attached to my forearm, to my elbow, to my biceps, my triceps, my shoulder, to my, my, my collarbone, my neck, in order for it to be connected to the head, in order for it to get instruction on what it's supposed to do. Now, to each one, the, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. See, guys, this is awesome. See, here... God has put you in, in the body, but why? Why? And I love this. I, I don't have the passage in the, in the notes, so I'm just going to read it. In, and I love this in John 14. In John 14, Jesus says this, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God. Trust also in me. In my Father's house are many rooms. Is this God's house? See, yes, he is talking about heaven. I go to prepare a place for you. He's sharing this message 2,000 years ago. He is preparing a place for us in heaven. He's also preparing a place for us in his house, in this church. There is a place that's just for you. Guys, if you notice, for the past several weeks, we are announcing ministries. We're having each ministry get up and share about their ministry. Why are we doing this? Because I am praying and hoping that the Holy Spirit is going to all of a sudden get, someone's going to say, you know, I like that. You know, I need to be a part of that. You know, and then to get in touch with that leader and say, how can I help you? And to come for the common good. See, God has a place for you to belong but it's not to do nothing. First Corinthians twelve seven. Now to each one the spirit manifests uh, the manifestation of the spirit is given for the common good. Again, 
Because here, you see, and this is what's beautiful, because in 1 Corinthians, we see the Holy Spirit gives us gifts. In Romans chapter 12, the Father gives us gifts. In Ephesians 4, Jesus gives us gifts. But they're each giving us a gift to attach us to the body. In Romans 12, 4 through 5, just as each of us has one body with many members, and these members do not all have the same function, so in Christ we who are many form one body, and each member belongs to all the others. Guys, I, and me, I, I take that seriously. When, but when I, God put in my heart to make a Nazarite vow to not to cut my hair before revival, I just didn't do that on my own. I went to the elders because I not only represent myself, I represent the chapel. And I say, hey, guys, this is what God put on my heart. Am I free to do this? See, because I don't belong to myself. I belong to you. You belong to me. Can I count on you? Can you count on me? I hope I've proven that you can count on me. If you can't, please talk to me. What can I do to demonstrate that? Can I count on you? See, because you don't belong to yourself. See, those who want to be Christians without belonging to a church becomes very dangerous. I want to go back to, into Genesis chapter 2. In Genesis chapter 2, it says... God says, it is not good for man to be alone. Well, what is the Christian doing when they're isolating themselves from the church? They're being alone. They somehow feel they've graduated. It's not about, <laughs> oh, you've arrived? I'm only going to arrive when I see Jesus face to face. See, now, even here in Ephesians 4, I love this. Now, this is, and also, this is where it is. Earlier, it's talking about the body. To prepare God's people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. You see, in Ephesians 4, why is the church here? The church here is to prepare who? For works of service. You. Did he say me? The church is here to prepare me for works of what? Of attendance? No. Of service. Too many people, they wake up Sunday morning, they say, ah, am I going to go to church today? You know, uh, you know, weather's too nice. Ah, weather's too bad. Ah, I'm tired. That's the wrong question. Or they say, what church am I going to? Thank you, Lord, that my hand doesn't have an option between attaching to my body and then going to someone else's body. They can only belong to one body. Now, the church universal, yes, but there's our houses. And see, but see God wants us to have, if I don't belong to myself, I belong to to a house. God has a place for you. A place that, not just for you to serve, but a place so that you could learn what you are, who you are, what is your deepest destiny, and what does living really mean. We'll keep reading in Ephesians. And when is the church, how long are we doing this for? Until we all reach unity in the faith and the knowledge of the Son of God and become mature, attaining to the whole measure of the fullness of Christ. I don't think we've arrived yet, people. And, and the, the truth, to some degree, I, I, this is God just bringing conviction to me. See, because you know what? Some, sometimes the problem we have here in New England, we're very busy. We're very busy. I got this I got to do. I got that I got to do. I have this I got to do. You know what? I, I, I'll go to church on Sunday. 
I can't go on Wednesday. I can't go here. I, I got too much going on. And, we, and here's the thing. Now here's the fun thing. Is, let me put this out there. When we put up a sign-up sheet for people to commit, <laughs> ministry leaders, how does that go? Not good. No one signs up. You know why? Well, I got to keep my options open. You know, there might be something better that comes along. I, I don't know if I could really be there. I don't want Let your yes be yes and your no be no. What are you telling God? Here, there's another pastor that I wanted. And it was interesting. I was, at, I was at a church, and they were singing a great worship song. And the worship song was saying, God is on your side. What do you mean God's on my side? I like the sound of that, but I love this. In Joshua, Joshua chapter 5, Joshua crosses over the Jordan River. Moses is taken, and he's at the city of Jericho. And this is, a, I mean, and they're, they've been slaves for 400 years. They really haven't been, been that many skirmishes. And now he's wondering, how are we going to defeat Jericho? And we read here in, in Joshua uh, uh, 5.13. Now when Joshua was near Jericho, he looked up and saw a man standing in front of him with a drawn sword. What do you think when you see a person with a drawn sword? They're ready for a battle. Joshua went up to him and asked, Are you for us or for our enemies? Neither. He replied. But as commander of the army of the Lord, I have now come. Wait a minute. He came really to defeat Jericho, so doesn't that mean that he's on Israel's side? No. See, one of the biggest problems, we keep thinking that God is on our side. He's not a means to my end. I died. And my life is now hidden in him. He's not asking, can he be on our team? He wants to know, are you on my side? He doesn't come to take sides. He is his own side. That's called the church. I also love this. In, in John 17... In John 17, let's see. Uh, in John 17, Jesus is talking to the Heavenly Father, saying that he's going to come again, and that he is going to re return to heaven. And he tells the Father, I have added to your glory by completing what you have destined me to do. What has God destined you to do? I got news for you. It's so much bigger than what you can ever think or imagine. What is he calling you to do and by you doing it you add glory to him you see the question shouldn't be am I going to go to church today it should be am I needed in church today are you needed in church today? If the answer is no, what does that say to you? What does that say? You're not needed. In closing, and, and we're going to, we're running out of time, so I'm gonna, we'll pick up next week. I'm, uh, 
But I love this. In closing, there is a great section, and I was reading, there are at least 10 benefits that God gives us by a, a faithful attendance in church. Number one, church attendance pleases and glorifies God. I love this. When we, I first came here one time, uh, we had a secretary, and she saw me. She goes, oh, good, you're here. I'm like, that's so good. It's all right, nice. Well, she needed a key, but and I had the key. But it was so exciting that she was excited that I'm here. Uh, do you have any idea? Okay, how about this? How many of you have kids that have left the house? How do you feel when they come over? Oh, good, you're here. How do you think your heavenly father is when you come into his house? He's not one of these passive fathers. Son, come here. Daughter, come here. He celebrates. Second, church attendance is not an act, church attendance is an act of love to your neighbor. You don't know. Maybe there's someone here that you are an answer to their prayer. Because you have a certain gift set. You have a position in industry. You are, whatever it is, you are an answer to their prayer. But you're not coming today. That prayer is not going to be answered. Well, it was supposed to be because you're supposed to be here. And you were supposed to come and, and you are supposed to be a dialogue. And there was supposed to be some impartation. And there's supposed to be some, some insight. Third, church attendance can make you smarter. I praise the Lord. My, my wife hasn't said it in a while, but she would say to me, Doug, I know God uses you because you're not that good. And she's right. I praise God. There is no way I should be where I am today as a pastor, as a businessman. There is no way anyone who saw me or knew me as a child would ever say, oh, yeah, I can see why Doug got there. I got here because God moving in my life, God redirecting my thoughts, speaking into me, transformed me from this person to this person, for someone who is shy and timid, to someone who's bold and courageous, to a person who knows that he walks in God's favor. Not because of me, because I'm his masterpiece. You're his masterpiece. Church attendance makes you, can make you wealthier. Not just financially, but I'm gonna tell you, as we tithe to the Lord, the only times that I've been tight financially is when I wasn't tithing. But when I tithe, God opens up blessings. He opens up opportunity so I could even be more of a blessing. I praise the Lord. I not only tithe here, but I give to ministries in Africa that I met. I give to people in Africa. I give to organizations. Thank you, God, for giving me the resources to be a blessing. Church attendance, oh, and here, meaningful, fellow, okay, uh, church attendance can make you healthier. Healthier. Well, not if you just eat all the food in our social. We, we, we're working on that because there's, there's some food out there that they taste really good. But uh, I don't know if it's all that healthy. But, but, you can get an understanding. You can learn something. You, you know, you can, God can open, open, and here's what I also... A meaningful fellowship can reduce, this is the study, meaningful fellowship can reduce both stress and risk of mortality by 55% among middle-aged adults. Church attendance can make you happier. What do you mean happier? Because I'm not defined by my circumstances anymore. 
I'm defined by God. A Harvard researcher concluded weekly church attendance effectively improved the physical and mental health of millions of Americans and reduced mortality by 20 to 30 percent over a 15-year period. Church attendance can make, we already said, can make you wealthier. Okay? Church attendance can make you more generous. Guys, it, 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 I am blessed by sometimes the generosity of people. I hear of a story, oh, this person, and all of a sudden I hear, oh, this person came over with a meal and with a car for them to borrow for a week. Or this, and it, wow. Wow, thank you, God. Church attendance can protect your marriage. I'm going to tell you, if it wasn't for me serving the Lord, I don't think my marriage would have survived. But because I did serve the Lord, I heard his voice, and I followed his voice, and I praise God for the marriage that he's blessed me with today. And that I still have the wife of my youth by my side. Thank you, God. Church attendance can protect your family against the delusional thinking of this world. Your family is under bombardment. And you need to be able to give a sound answer, not just because the Bible says so, but you need to be able to explain why. But because it makes you wiser, smarter, healthier, you have a reason to say and to give your children. And church attendance should be able to limit the power of the state. Because if we are really the church, there's going to be a concern that someone has, and they're going to bring it to the church, and then we're going to pray, and someone else is going to rise up and say, hey, you know, I know someone who's on that board. I know someone over here, and you know what? We're going to move, and we're going to activate. Time to awaken people. I don't know what our future holds. I just know who holds our future. It's time for us to awaken. Do you want to belong? Do you want to be needed? See, because with that, there comes an expectation. All I know is this. I have one life to show my Savior how much I love him. I have one life to give to him. I have one life to give to you. I love giving my time to you. What was me away? How people may, they meet with me and then they're surprised that I made time for them. I'm like, why would that be a surprise? I love you. It's not hard for me to spend time with you. See, Jesus says, as the Father has loved me, so I have loved you. And you will remain in my love as you love one another the way that I have loved you. See, when you are not part of a body where you are vitally connected and you know the reality of the call, you live a delusional life. And you're not building an eternity. You're spending your future. Where's God calling you? Where are you to engage and to serve? The truth is, we should have two services. There's times we needed two services, but the truth, we couldn't do two services. You know why? We didn't have enough servants. Didn't have enough servants. Didn't have enough people who are trained, who are actual members of the church that we can trust and that, 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 that can do the ministry so that we can expand by having another service. And you know what? Part of that, shame on me. But shame on you. You hear the voice of the Lord. You have a relationship with Jesus Christ. 
He wants to get you engaged in the body. He wants you to be a vital, vibrant part of his body. So that the world will know that we are Christians by the love that we have for one another. Dear Lord and Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, that you bring no shame, you bring no condemnation, but Lord, I praise you that you bring conviction. And Lord, I thank you for the conviction that you're even bringing me on this. Lord God, may we not be satisfied with the status quo. Lord God, I pray that you would empower us to build a kingdom worthy of your name. Lord God, that you will build a kingdom and that you will build this house on each precept, on each law, on every decree that you have given to us in your word. That we will be a house of your word, a people of your word. Lord, that we follow you. Lord, that we have given ourselves to you and we give ourselves to one another. Lord God, be with us. Lord, speak to us. Move and have your way. And Lord God, may we follow you. And Lord, may we be bold and courageous. May we not just wait for someone else to fill the spot. But Lord, when you call us to fill it, that we'll fill it. For the strength that you provide. May you be glorified, O oh Lord. May your church arise. I pray you do not return for a wounded bride, but you return for a victorious bride. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
voices. He's a name above the names. Yeah, worthy of all praise. And my heart will sing how great is our God. He's a name above all names. He's a name above all names, worthy of all praise, and my heart will sing how great is our God. How great. family members. Make them aware of God's church. Make them aware of the power in unity when we come together, when we assemble together as the church. We close with John 17, starting at verse 20, Jesus' prayer for the believers. And he says, I do not pray for these alone but also for those who will believe in me through their word. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I in you. That they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me. The power is in unity. When you get the opportunity and you get home and you get on Facebook, share. Share the message today. See, when you give what you received, then that helps you to be able to apply it into your life and for it to manifest in your heart. Be revealed. Revelation. Amen. Father, we thank you. We glorify you. We declare that we are one. But I pray that you will make us even more intertwined with one another, bearing each other's burdens, rejoicing in one another, hoping in one another, encouraging one another, speaking life to one another, being sensitive and discerning where each other is, and having the words to speak to that situation. Father, we can only do this by your Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, we ask that you have our way, your way with us this week. As we walk out this door, we walk in peace and blessings and favor that can only come from the throne room. Now, Father, bless this your people. May your face shine upon them, those who are connected to them. Those that speak 
positively and speak life in our for them. May you bless them. Those who try to hurt them, God, may you raise a standard against them. For this is your body, your church. May you protect their going out and their coming in. And may they be blessed and highly favored. May their testimony be the testimony of the risen Christ. In Jesus' name, walk in favor, walk in power, walk in love. And walk with the character of Jesus. And let the world know that Jesus is Lord and do it with your life. God bless you and have a good week. Said I never would have made it I never would have made it Without you, Jesus I would have lost it all But now I see That you were there for me I never would have made it, oh no, I never would have made it without you, I would have lost it all, but now I see she was there for me, I'm stronger. I'm wiser, I'm better, so much better, oh, when I look back over all you brought me through. it all but now I see that you were there for me I'm I'm stronger I'm wiser so much better much better When I look back over all that you brought me through, I can see that you were the one to hold on to. Said I never would have made it. No. Never would have made it without Said I would have lost it all, but now I see that you were there for me. Oh, said I never would have made it, never would have made it, never could have made it without you. Said I would have lost it all, but now I see that you were there for me.